Yes, as the title suggests, we have two tickets available this coming Saturday, 22nd of July, for the 8pm screening of Oppenheimer at the BFI IMAX in 1570 IMAX. They're not from me, but a good friend has them available, is coming over to the BFI IMAX, especially to see Oppenheimer twice in quick succession, and he has two spare tickets for this showing. You message me below and I will put you in touch and try and make this deal a reality. They're electronic tickets, of course, so can be transferred over the web, so no problems. And they're £24 tickets for seats K6 and K7. So not the best in the house, but still pretty good. I don't think you'd be too disappointed with them. But the important thing is you'll get to see this great film in the best ever format known to man. So far away in the message boxes below and we'll see if we can make this a reality. Right, it's just as well some of us are hoarders, because in November 1996 the BFI sent out this pamphlet all about the forthcoming BFI IMAX and where they intended to build it in the ball ring in Waterloo. It came out with the usual monthly magazine of what was coming in the following month, and I've kept a few of those with important things in there like the John Carpenter season, Jane Fonda when she came over, and a Harold Lloyd season, things like that. So I kept a few of those, but this one fortunately I stuck away. And there's some interesting information in there, and the most interesting has got to be this enlargement of the, well, showing the equivalent of the film frames at the time, 35mm, 70mm, or standard 70mm I should say, 2.20 to 1, and then IMAX just way out on its own, nothing can compare with it, and when you think that the highest quality you're going to see with a video projector is just above 4K with a dual laser in a, what I call a faux IMAX, because it's not IMAX as I've always known it, and there is genuine IMAX frame with the beautiful IMAX logo on it that was sent to me by Michael at the BFI IMAX. So I've shown some IMAX frames in the past and compared them to 8mm, 16mm, 35mm and 70mm, so I'll leave a link to that video in the description below so that you can have a look at that and just in time for Oppenheimer opening as I record this tomorrow. Now if you do hear any sort of drilling or banging in the background, it's good news really, well it's good news for us because our cinema is finally being completed and we've already got a rather large porthole, the video projector's mounted upside down from the ceiling in the next room and it's all going ahead so I'll be putting a video, or I'll be including that in a future video, but Davey's here doing the work, <laughs> he's actually done some other work for us previously that was even more important and just great to have around and it's been wonderful watching this process and well Davy's process really as he worked out exactly how to do what our basic plans were so it's been quite an exciting time the last few days but I've also had a second look at the new Second Sight special Blu-ray release. Yeah, you know, I think most of us know by now that Second Sight do produce among the best of the releases on Blu-ray and 4K in terms of the packaging and what comes with them. And this was a preview disc I got a few weeks ago of their new release, May, which is a 2002 film, and I found it strangely compelling. It's a strange story, actually. I don't really know how to define it. I wouldn't say it's a horror movie. It's a bit grotesque towards the end, perhaps, but maybe a cross between a slasher and a Frankenstein film. But the cast in this are also good. I've found it a very well made film and Second Sight this time haven't cleaned up everything. I think I did notice the odd scratch. There was certainly a bit of neg dust and the odd bit of dirt on here. And I like that because you're not under any illusions that you're actually watching a film, even though you're video projecting it. Very good image quality. The color I think is a bit cold, but that suits the film. And that was probably how it was graded when it went out as a film in 2002. So recommended, but it might be a little grotesque or brutal. You might have to look away from the screen once or twice, and it can be a bit of a difficult watch at times, but I didn't really find it so until there was a bit of an eye gouging scene, and I thought, right, time to look away now. But other than that, I had no problems with it. So I think those of you out there that like the Arrow releases and all these particularly brutal films, I think may might be worth a look. So. I might be tempted with that special edition pack myself because I do really like these Second Sight releases. Right, another thing I've watched recently, Steven Spielberg's The Fablemans, which 
people were commenting to me that this was worth watching when it was in the cinema, but nowhere around me was actually showing a film print, so I thought I'd wait and enjoy it more at home. And this is a very good transfer. It might be worth a full review, actually. I'll see what I think. But I thought this film was beautiful, and it is the story of Steven Spielberg's early life, what got him into film, and leading up to a meeting with a certain director, who I won't say, but that director is played by David Lynch. <laughs> famous director himself of course and I thought that was the topper for the whole film so I thoroughly enjoyed this as a film fan and it's quite a surprise to see that it didn't really do that well at the cinema so maybe more evidence that mature audiences are no longer frequenting cinemas as much as they once did which is a terrible shame because if a film like that can't do well then what can really let's hope Oppenheimer can right I've got a video ready to go of the Leicester HMV, so I might release that around the same time as this. That's an interesting store, and the lower ground floor in particular I thought was huge and well worth a visit. So take a look at that. If you're ever in the Leicester area, you'll know where to head for. OK, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and perhaps consider subscribing. So I'll be encouraged to carry on creating content similar to this. Until the next one. Bye-bye for now.